Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others around the internet. In this episode of Sunday Reflection segment, we present the homily for the 19th Sunday of the year based on the liturgical readings of the B-Cycle. The liturgical readings of the 19th Sunday of the year dwell on the theme, Letting Jesus Nourish Our Spiritual Life. John Krakauer, in his book entitled Into Thin Air, narrates the story of an expedition to Mount Everest during the spring of 1996, which resulted in a great loss of life. One of the most unfortunate stories was about a young man named Andy Harris, who was one of the expedition leaders. He had stayed at the peak past the deadline that the leaders themselves had set. As he was coming down, he was in dire need of oxygen. He radioed his problem to the base camp, telling them what he needed, and told them that he had come upon a catch of oxygen canisters left by some of the other climbers, but they were all empty. In fact, they were not empty but they are absolutely full. However, the problem was that Andy Harris was unable to think clearly because his brain was already so starved for oxygen. He died arguing with them that the canisters were empty, when in reality they were full. Just as oxygen is needed for the survival and growth of our bodily existence, so also spiritual nourishment Jesus gives us is needed for our spiritual survival and growth. The readings of the 19th Sunday liturgy invite us to seek the spiritual nourishment Jesus, the Word of God and the Bread of Life, offers us to nurture and care for our spiritual life. The first reading taken from the first book of Kings describes the physical and spiritual hungers experienced by prophet Elijah. Elijah defeated 450 prophets of Baal in a public sacrifice contest and after which he killed all of them. Discouraged and frustrated, Elijah was fleeing to save his life from the soldiers of Queen Jezebel, the pagan wife of King Ahab, a worshipper of the pagan god Baal who were out to kill him. Strengthened physically and spiritually by the miraculous food God provided him through the angel, Elijah makes a 40-day journey to Mount Sinai in Horeb, where God recommissions him in his prophetic ministry and to choose and anoint a successor to continue his mission after him. In the second reading taken from the letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul gives the newly converted Jewish and Gentile Christians of Ephesus some practical advice for peaceful, communal, and Christian living. He reminds them that their Christian discipleship calls for letting go their enmity towards each other and being guided by virtues of compassion and forgiveness. Likewise, they must avoid all bitterness, fury, shouting, and reviling, which would grieve the Holy Spirit of God. St. Paul also tells them that they must live as God's children in imitation of Jesus the bread from heaven, who loved them by offering himself as a sacrificial and fragrant offering pleasing to God. Hence, like Jesus, being strengthened by their faith, they must live their Christian life by doing the right thing in their relationship with others. When they live in this manner, they would be caring for the well-being of their spiritual life. In the Gospel of St. John, we hear the discourse of Jesus in the synagogue of Capernaum on his return there after his miraculous feeding of 5,000. In this discourse, Jesus reveals a number of truths about himself. He says that he is the living bread that came down from heaven. He is the bread of life. The bread that he gives is the flesh for the life of the world. No one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws him. And anyone who believes in Jesus would be raised on the last day 
For no one has seen the Father except Jesus, the Son of God, who came from God. Thus, by the above statements, Jesus proclaims himself as the bread of life from heaven, the new and perfect manna, and the incarnate Son of God, who has come down from heaven, sent by the Father for our salvation, and calls us to believe in him and have eternal life that will never end. On this 19th Sunday of the year, the readings and the liturgy invite us, firstly, to recognize our weaknesses and be transformed by God's grace. Prophet Elijah recognized his weaknesses and limitations and acknowledged them before God. As a result, God provided him miraculous food. Eating of this miraculous food given through the angel strengthened him both physically and spiritually and helped him to go to Mount Sinai, receive God's plan for him, and accomplish it through his prophetic ministry until the last day of his life here on earth. In the same way, when we open ourselves to God, recognize our weaknesses and limitations, and acknowledge the transforming power of the spiritual nourishment Jesus, the bread of life, gives, we will experience the empowering power of God's grace, transforming our powerlessness and discouragement. Nourish us spiritually, renew our commitment to God, and make us committed to our vocation. Thereby make our spiritual pilgrimage to heaven until the day we see God face to face and live with him eternally. Secondly, the liturgy today calls us to accept Jesus as our bread of life and allow him to influence our Christian life. Jesus can influence our Christian living by deepening our intimate union with God, by preserving, increasing, and renewing the sanctifying grace we received in baptism, by cleansing us from our past sins, and protecting us from falling into sin in the future by strengthening us in the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, by enabling us to free ourselves from inordinate and disordered attachments that take away from our rootedness in Christ, and by uniting us more deeply into the mystery of the church, particularly through the grace of the sacrament. Gathering as a worshipping community around the altar of God, let us ask the Lord the grace to acknowledge our weaknesses and open ourselves to the transforming power of God that comes through Christ, thereby allow Jesus to nourish and influence our everyday Christian living positively. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.